As always, we see how much we can cover uh, in the next several minutes with the mayor of Kansas City joining us on a Thursday here on KCMO Talk Radio. He is uh, Quinton Lucas. Uh, Mr. Mayor, good morning. Thanks for the time as always. We appreciate it. Good morning. It is great to be with everybody on this beautiful spring day. It is. It is. It is. Um, Let's just start off here. Uh, Yesterday, of course, big news in this town. Three Kansas City men charged with illegal firearms trafficking and straw purchases related to uh, the shooting at the Super Bowl rally. Uh, I I think that all of us can applaud this, uh, can cheer this. And as far as you're concerned, it sounds like the feds worked very well uh, with local officials to make these arrests. What do you attribute this to? Uh, First of all, I attribute it to the hard work of law enforcement, both at the Kansas City Police Department and at the ATF. I attribute it to the ongoing cooperation between federal agencies and local law enforcement. And I attribute it to the fact that I think we are all sensible people who recognize that a flood of firearms, particularly from certain traffickers, one of the defendants accused of trafficking more than three dozen firearms into the state of Missouri, being found at scenes of a homicide in Columbia, stolen vehicles, any other number of things, including the Chiefs Parade. That sort of work is vital and is important. You know, I think after every incident, we, we have this focus just on the user, uh, the person who is the trigger puller, who certainly needs to be one who's brought to justice. But we also need to look at suppliers who are thwarting federal laws, common sense, and getting guns into the hands of minors and felons and beyond, which helps attribute to the uh, high violent crime numbers we see in this city. I totally agree. Um, I think anybody with common sense would say, OK, what do we do to get guns that are illegally trafficked in this town off the streets. Do you see a way to further the relationship with the ATF, uh, with federal agencies here in Kansas City, to go after more of these illegal guns that you and I both know right now are probably all over Kansas City? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think there are a few things we can do. First, Missouri, once and for all, needs to give up on the Second Amendment Preservation Act. It is currently being disputed in in federal court. I think that it has been seen that it was a terrible piece of legislation. It does not help the people in any Missouri municipality be safer. And this is why, frankly. You know, there is this this boogeyman that's created of federal agents and authorities. When your local FBI agents, our ATF agents, DEA, United States Marshals, are public safety folks often coming from local law enforcement. They're people who walk our community, who are working hard to make our community safer each day. If you're someone who liked Operation Legend and hundreds of law enforcement agents coming to Kansas City to help us solve crimes and get bad guys off the streets, you're someone who should believe in cooperation that makes our community safer, makes our police officers safer, and fundamentally is something that's important for Missouri. So I think that is a just a key step one in what we need to do. Step two, I think gun courts that can allow us to prioritize gun offenses, including even at the municipal court level, are vital something I've shared with my peers on the Board of Police Commissioners, remember, we're the ones who actually run the police department, is that there are a number of ordinances relating to the enforcement of gun laws in our state and in our city. And to the extent the charges are harder to find on something like armed criminal action at the state level, or it's harder to get a felon in possession, let's say the federal level, we, we have crimes in our city for the unlawful discharge of firearms in city limits. I frankly think every time you have someone who is using a firearm in Kansas City that's not, uh, doesn't have a valid self-defense or some other rationale for it, we should be looking at charges in more situations. And indeed, they should be looking at incarceration in more situations. You know, I don't think these things are impossible to address. It's just that we need to make sure that we're saying not only we're focused, we're supporting resources on it. That is why we see the budget increase for KCPD that far exceeds any department, any department in Kansas City, no matter how much of a softy people want to call me. And I think it's important that we actually have this federal cooperation. I hear you say if we uh, go after individuals who are breaking laws in Kansas City and we hit them with local, state and and federal charges, if we can, um, that are already on the books right now, we can clean up a lot of these problems. Is that is that a correct interpretation? Yes, yes. No, I absolutely think so. I mean, I, and here's something that yeah, I think you and I agree on more often than you would think. Just nobody, I guess, on the other side ever asks me. I believe in enforcement of ordinances and nuisance laws and those seemingly lighter issues. They were created for a reason. And part of that is because we do need to have good social order. 
And I think particularly when those relate to guns, gun possession, gun use, gun trafficking, we need to make sure that those are getting the priorities. I, I am somebody who certainly cares about how people get into troubling situations, how we can fund everything under the sun to help people avoid it. But laws exist for a reason. Penalties exist for a reason. The criminal justice system does. And it's my view those charges in all situations, frankly, should be brought. And I think that we can work out on the defense side and, and through the criminal justice system ways that we can look at diversion or any number of other steps. But I think we do need to see enforcement. So um, other news on the uh, uh, crime front this week in Kansas City is uh, there's a new federal lawsuit that argues uh, the Missouri law, which, of course, requires uh, the Board of Police Commissioners here in this town, of which you're a part of. It says it was created uh, to keep black people enslaved. That is in the lawsuit. Um, It's simply an effort to keep slavery legal and black people in chains. Uh, How do you feel about this lawsuit that was filed in U.S. District Court uh, this week? And is that a fair assessment of the uh, system right now? Uh, I don't think that the uh, state commissioner system has ever been helpful for a safer Kansas City. I mean, everybody is is trying to make any number of points on uh, St. Louis lately. There's a discussion in the state legislature. And last year they had, what, a 20 percent drop in homicides. And by the way, every other city we saw dropping homicides in has local control. I don't think in any way local control of policing is, is a bad thing. Closer connections to the community, accountability to the local community is fundamentally a positive. I, I see this lawsuit. I consider any effort that um, changes the state system of control is a good one. And I think, frankly, when you look at um, stronger relations right now that the Kansas City Police Department has with the community in large part, it has nothing to do with actually the board changes. It has a lot to do with the fact that we have a command staff and leadership that want to be out in the community, want to be accountable to people, and see the fact that they actually report to the people of Kansas City broadly, rather than a board that is too often, too often, captured by politics, which I think was the case certainly around 2020 and in some recent years. And so I think that accountability is a good thing. Pete, if you have a problem with KCPD, which I know you probably never do, but if ever you did, right, does it make sense to call some commissioners who never have to answer your call to, to try to speak at the end of a board meeting about a bunch of issues where you don't know if somebody's listening? Or does it make more sense to be able to talk to the mayor, to be able to talk to the council and say there are important ways we can get things done better? I think there's this this pervasive view that if if there were local control of the police, all of a sudden uh, the world would go mad. But if you look at police departments in every single American city, right, from the most progressive to the most conservative, by and large, you see non-intervention in most things policing, except for budget issues, as Lord knows we can do here, too. Right. And I think what you largely see are those closer and stronger relations. That's something that I think uh, is important for us. I don't know how this lawsuit will go, but I believe any effort that gives a voice and, frankly, equality to the people of Kansas City as compared to their peers in Grandview and Grain Valley is something that's good. Mayor Quentin Lucas is uh, joining us here on KCMO Talk Radio 95.7 FM and, of course, streaming on the KCMO uh, Talk Radio app. So we'll see how that lawsuit plays out going forward but it sounds to me like you're taking the approach of it's more about your belief in in having local control than it is defending the accusations in this lawsuit look i'm you know i'm not a party to this lawsuit i i certainly support efforts towards local control i understand the equal protection argument and uh, many of those that are made i don't think this is a system that started uh, to give black people a stronger voice, if you're asking me that. And so I, I imagine it'll be interesting to see it litigated along the way. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the other big news here uh, this week, and I know that you were uh, at the Big 12 tournament last night, I assume you'll be there uh, the rest of the way this week, is that that is going to be extended in Kansas City until 2031. Uh, the Big 12 Women's Soccer Tournament is going to be coming up to Kansas City from Round Rock, Texas. Yep. Um, so those are obviously uh, more events that are going to be in this town for years to come. Uh, the Big 12 tournament in general, uh, there was a lot of conversation when Brett Yormark took over this league as to whether or not he'd want to move it to New York, Vegas, who knows, Phoenix, anywhere else. How did the city keep this tournament here? What did it take to keep this tournament here? You know, first of all, I think Brett Yormark is one of the best commissioners in college sports. You see that from it, and you've covered it. 
the position that the Big 12 was in probably five years ago as compared to today. And compare that to the Pac-12, which is now the Pac-2 and largely doesn't exist. I think uh, working with a strong commissioner, I give him props on a lot of the work there. You have seen incredible improvements in Kansas City. You know, I know you have some doomsdayers who listen to the show and want to call us just a, a, a woke declining Gomorrah or something like that. But I think what you are seeing is population up, new facilities being built, new, new like interest every single day, conventions and conferences. And the Big 12 wants to be part of it. And so whether it's basketball, soccer, I think you're going to see us competing for even more college athletic events, NCAA wrestling next week. This is, a, this is a type of community that, first of all, I think knows where it fits in market-wise. I think we are owning the Midwest and the Central Time Zone in terms of big events, even as competing with Chicago. I think that we are a market that's on the rise, and that's being recognized by Brett Yormark, the Big 12 presidents, and certainly everybody who's come to town this weekend. So what is the biggest competitive advantage Kansas City has in landing more events like this? You know, a few different things. One location, I think, is very additive when you look at a national conference. Uh, after a while, even if you're going to Vegas or God knows if you're going to Orlando, right, that is something that's going to be very different in terms of who can actually be there. There certainly is history that goes with the Big 12 here in Kansas City. But I also think that, you know, we actually have good walkable venues that are fairly close to each other. Borough Hall, Coffin Performing Arts Center, the Lowe's Hotel, Power and Light District, T-Mobile Center. I'm not making this a comment about Royals baseball, but frankly, as you have seen that strong consolidation, this is something that you saw in uh, Indianapolis probably a generation ago when they started getting big events. They continue to do so. Frankly, with respect to all the Hoosiers out there, I think Kansas City is a much more interesting and entertaining and and culturally intriguing place with better food. And so I think that you are going to continue to see this type of growth in Kansas City thanks to our investment downtown and the fact that unlike some other Midwestern cities, downtown isn't just a place for big events, but you have couples that come from the suburbs for for dinner, for events, for art shows and all of that. It's been a great resurgence and something I expect to continue for years ahead. Uh, Mayor Lucas on KCMO. So who are you taking tonight? Are you going to take uh, K-State in the points? Are you going to take Iowa State? Because you know as well as I do, Iowa State fans, <laughs> keeping them around is good for business in this town. Yeah, you know, I love I love my Cyclones, and I love seeing Iowa State fans. Uh, I know they call T-Mobile Center Hilton South talking about their arena, but here's here's my jam, right? I love some Kansas State. As you may know, part of my life, I grew up in Hutchinson, Kansas, where uh, everybody out there is actually a Wildcat fan, not so much of a Jayhawk. So uh, I put the edge on uh, uh, the Cats tonight. I hope they keep moving because here's the thing. While Iowa State fans are good money through this tournament, we hope they stay through the weekend. It'll be a blast. K-State fans, particularly if there can be a run into the NCAA tournament, which I know will be a challenge, but if it is, fills up every bar in Kansas City and surrounds, well, until uh, at least late March, and so we're excited about that. That's a good point. Play the long game with Kansas State. He is uh, the mayor of Kansas City, Quentin Lucas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, enjoy the games this week, and we'll talk to you next week. All right, every man a wildcat. Have a good one. Take care. Uh, There you go. A little emoff from Quentin Lucas on a uh, Thursday morning.